Greetings all around the world. So uh, this video is going to be about gardening and how to grow roses from seed. I'm mad about roses and I have been for years. Um, my mother and grandmother all grow them obsessively uh, and that is always a topic of conversation that we've had together. And since purchasing um, my little farm, I have two acres, I have been trying to create a rose and date farm, and I am. It's just taking a little time. And roses, when you buy a lot of them, obviously prices add up. I've had to be a bit crafty of how I can have roses without paying for the cost of a new rose or especially a potted rose and so I have tried my hand at growing roses from seed and from cuttings. I'll talk about the cuttings in another video but this is about the seed. Ever since I've really became very passionate about roses I have always tried to germinate them from seed and any of you know that you will know the challenges of growing roses from seed if you are not knowledgeable or if you, if you don't have the information of how to do it properly because that's all it comes down to is knowing the environment that the seed is akin to or natural to. For many years I tried to grow them without success. Um, I didn't know the best way of how to do it and when I found out um, the process um, I killed them with too much love. I've never germinated roses from seeds until now and I want to share what worked for me and so keep watching. The rose seed comes from the rose hip and the rose hip is the ovary part of the base underneath the petals of the flower. This is way that this hip is formed is through either manual pollination by hand or by insects such as bees or ants or any kind of little insect. Once the hip is formed over several months and it turns red and orange you are basically basically red like this or orange. This is a little bit on the green side there's still a bit of green tinge but this was actually picked for me. I, I didn't actually take them but I'll chance my luck with them anyway. And so once the hip is formed and is a nice color like this you and so at this point it um, it's ready to open to cut open the seeds. I've actually had these in the fridge for about a month and I need to cut them open. But you cut them open and inside is going to be a bunch of little seeds and so once you have your seeds, you can't just plant them in the soil. You need to go through a process which is called stratification. And stratification is when you put seeds in a cold environment where they become dormant, they're suspended from activation or growth, and they basically go to sleep. For roses specifically, you are best to keep them in the fridge for 8 to 12 weeks. So my story is, is that I was in Queensland, which is northern Australia, in April and uh, I found a gorgeous pink climber with roses with the most incredible scent and I asked my host Bev if I could take some of the hips and she said yes and so I basically took a whole bunch of hips that had been on this climber for I don't know how long, a long time. And this climber we estimated to be an age of about 30 to 40 years, Bev said. So back in the 80s. And it's gorgeous. It's huge. It's amazing. And the smell is unbelievable. So I collected all the seeds. I then had the job of soaking the hips and then cutting them open. And here are a bunch of seeds that I've had in the fridge. Now obviously there's a little water in here. I've added that this morning um, because I'm about to put these in a tray. So 
um, this is what a seed typically looks like. I've actually got these seeds in vermiculite. That was my first error when trying to propagate them initially was the soil medium was too wet. You can't be frightened that this was my problem is that I was frightened that the seeds would dry out and they wouldn't germinate well. I did the opposite. So I basically um, the seeds would not germinate because it was too moist and creating mold and all sorts of problems and so I could never be successful. I looked online on so many websites, so many uh, DIYs, Rosarian societies and I really kind of gelled with what Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm had suggested and that was to put the seeds in a moist vermiculite which is what this is this is vermiculite um, and this is much too wet you can see that water there he, he suggested a moist environment and moist to the extent that when you squeeze the vermiculite there shouldn't be any drops of water coming out I absolutely agree with this now because of my own trial and error so I basically put these seeds in that type of um, vermiculite medium slightly moist. I put them in the fridge within an airtight container, put the lids on them and let them go. Two months later I opened the lids and I was so disappointed because there were there was mold on the top layer of the seeds and I thought oh no this is it. Seeds are done. They're not going to germinate anymore. And so I basically tried to get more moisture out by leaving the lids crossed over the top of the containers like this to let the to let some circulation of air flow into the seeds and I kind of for, forgot about them because I felt like um, my dreams were dashed and the experiment was all finished and basically I had wrecked the seeds yet again and I was disappointed because I wasn't going up to Queensland anytime soon and I spent all that time um, cleaning them, soaking them, preparing them, doing everything exactly how I should and then only for them to be moldy and I thought it was all over. Well, so anyway, I came back, started this in April, I checked the seeds in June, early June and then I checked them again because I for forgot about them a few days ago. And I checked them and I couldn't believe what I saw. I saw, as you can see, I saw some gorgeous sprouts, little roots coming out from the seeds. I could not believe my eyes. I felt like I had won the lotto. <laughs> I was so happy that I hadn't destroyed the seeds by overkilling them with love. And so here I have, I, I end up fishing through this whole, not just this container, but there's some more containers of getting all the ones with the little root shoots out and putting them in trays of just regular soil medium, a seed raiser mix, and have put them in a, a slightly damp environment and covered them with a, like a 30 liter container and put them out in my paddock so they have plenty of um, warmth even though it's still winter here. This is actually quite a small uh, small seed, small little shoot coming out but you can see this is actually one of the older seeds because Bev had so many hips on this climber some of these hips were years old and this is from one of the old hips I would speculate maybe two or three maybe four years old and I thought I would throw those seeds in anyway um, hoping or maybe you know hoping that they would germinate I was going to throw it all in into the lucky dip and see what came out and you can see this beautiful little shoot coming out from the seed exciting thing for me because I've never in my life after so many years of trying to germinate rose, roses from seeds, I've never been able to do it. Interesting thing about germinating roses from seed is that you're not guaranteed you're going to get a true representation of the, the mother plant. 
So I have no idea out of these seeds if I'm going to get a true representation of, of that beautiful pink climbing rose. Um, I may, I may get something better, but I may get something that's completely different because I did not pollinate these by hand. I did not pollinate them myself. The birds and the bees and the ants and flies, they all pollinated these hips. And so I call it the lucky dip. And I'm not sure what I'm going to end up with, but it's exciting because it could be anything. Um, and actually, I was reading uh, in a David Austin article how hundreds of thousands of rose seeds are germinated every year um, at, I guess, their laboratories. And maybe only three or five ever make it to uh, like commercial growing. So out of all the roses that they grow from seed, only maybe three make the cut and become a David Austin rose. So you can imagine the, the painstaking time and effort that goes into germinating rose seeds only to yield you know, mediocre results because you really don't know what you're going to get and how it's going to look. Um, but that's the whole fun part of rose propagating and germination from seed because you can actually create your own hybridized species by taking two uh, rose, rose plants that you like and crossing them. So taking the pollen from one and putting it on the stigma of another flower and you know you get a cross between the two and I find that absolutely fascinating. So for any of you rose growers out there and you love roses and you want to experiment, I absolutely encourage you to do this method of propagating roses. But all you need to do is just be a little bit patient. And I will suggest that when you put your seeds with the vermiculite, have it almost dry to the touch. Believe me, these rose seeds are resilient. They do not need much moisture to get them going and that's my lesson learned so even though Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm says to have it moist in my experience I would even go a step further and and have the vermiculite almost dry so you know because you have to remember the fridge is already moist inside it's already a humid environment you don't want to make a moldy environment like I did because it was and I thought it was all over and I'm so glad that it wasn't. So uh, this is how they're looking. There's hundreds of rose seeds in there. This is a combination of vermiculites and topsoil. I have them in upside down containers as you can see to keep the moisture in and generate heat in this cold weather. Oops, that's dragon fruit, rose seedlings and different stages. You can see these beautiful true leaves here. True leaves on here. And these beautiful white ones. I'm not too sure about the white roses. This one here. It seems to be doing okay, it's hard to see on the camera, but uh, I have a bunch of them, and these are all from seed, so it's a big lucky dip. Don't know what they are. And so this has been going on for about a month now. We have the tray of more rose seedlings. So every few days I will come out here and go through this vermiculite mix and rotate it because usually there are um, rose seedlings um, sprouting underneath. Also here, there's some beautiful ones coming through at various stages. And once we get to a certain size, uh, I hopefully I build this hothouse in time, which you can see the base of the hothouse over here. I get the hot house done in time, I will be putting the roses in there. I know it may look crazy, but I needed to cover the tops of my fruit trees with this 
netting because of the kangaroos eating them. So most of my rose, uh, rose seeds are in here and it seems to be working well. Bit of a trial and error. We're about to get swooped. Good morning.